Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to be talking about key electric vehicle components and this topic will be much uh, different than the previous topic we have talked about and the first thing we should ask is why should we care about it? Well the first thing and the foremost is the, for the present power system is having instabilities using EV penetration use so basically with proper management and coordination EVs can be turned into a major contributor to the successful implementation of smart grid concept which we have talked about in my earlier videos now there are some different possibilities that in it can generate some environmental benefit as well and this also has been covered over in my previous videos so if you haven't seen any previous videos I would really recommend you to go over the previous videos as well now this thing can reduce the greenhouse gases produced by transportation sector alone itself now this is a very basic thing we already know about so why do we even care the first thing we want to like is putting things into perspective of how this electric vehicles are actually made and what do you think when you when someone tosses the term electric vehicles so to put all together you have four components and I can show it to you right here I'll highlight the, all the components the first is the body design in this you have body structure which is over here the frame the bumper of the car the suspension suspension these are the four different categories that are embedded in the body design and are using some sort of electric modulation within the system now the main of the main is the energy source where where your batteries and battery chargers are providing the energy or kilowatts to all the components that are using the kilowatts so this is a provider all right now this is providing to here in this sector and then this is also providing to auxiliaries such as you might have a uh, temperature control you might have music system brakes steering wheel energy management in general all right so this is what's really happening using the energy source and apart from energy source you have your steering wheel which is the electronic controller power converter and electric motor transmission vehicle uh, wheels as well so you can see that this is a symbol for very significant interaction between the battery and the vehicle itself and whenever you see this symbol it means that not so much is uh, the interaction happening between the vehicle and the battery itself so what's really th something that we can see is that if we were to put it all together we see that EVs can be considered as a combination of different subsystems and each of this interact with each other to make the car work and there are multiple technologies that are employed in the sum system and what I have already listed down that this one being the first category the second the third and the fourth so this four subsystems three four work together in order to make the EV function all right so the main important thing over here that needs to be focused on is two because number two is providing the energy to each of these components so the components that we really care about in our EV are component number three and four which are basically how the car uh, feels like when you drive so these are the driving components and the number one that when we talk about is really what's really happening here is how your car looks like and for us it might mean how our car looks like but in reality how efficient is your car when the manufacturers make the car they need to make sure your body structure the frame the bumpers the suspension and uh, anything involved in the process of 
creating this structure, the body design, it's not using so much of weight in order to reduce the speed or reduce the energy that will be employed in all these different uh, subsystems. All right, so the key part of the subsystem are contributed to uh, the total system, which is uh, one, two, and three, and four. Uh, and what's really happening is that we can see all this are working together in order to make the EV function. All right, now before I go on to the next slide, what really is happening on my YouTube is that whenever uh, someone coins the term electric vehicle, people have been uh, thinking uh, cars such as Tesla and that's absolutely correct but there are different vehicles that are involved when someone coins the term EV and let's look at it the first one is the battery electric vehicle which I can say as Tesla so you have one of the EVs and these are all four electric vehicles such as EVs when we, someone coins the term EV this can be described as something that uses the battery inside its electric vehicle. The hybrid, which is something that involves either a fuel cell, a battery, or gasoline. Okay, now this kind of vehicles are known as hybrid vehicles. Now we can look at Nissan, for example, because they have made a hybrid and Nissan can be used for fuel cell as well as well as plug-in hybrid now the plug-in hybrid is basically a car where you can plug in to your wall connector and say this is a wall connector in your home and a car is plugged in to it okay so whenever you use a wall adapter to connect your car towards it it's known as a plug-in hybrid so these are all four components that you need to know about uh, that whenever you someone uses the term EV they might be referring to one of these cars now what's really happening is that when we talked about how much the energy is being used by the steering wheels and every other system what we really want to be concerned about is how much the torque versus the speed per revolution is coming out to be now if we were to find that out What's really ha important here is that we need to know how much is the speed in revolution per minute. This revolution per minute generates our MPH or miles per hour or someone can use kilometers per hour, whichever is the factor that the country is being employed in. Now, in order to have a greater MPH and a greater kilo, uh, kilometer per hour, What's really happening is that we need to have a torque which is need to be higher. So directly we can see that torque is inversely proportional to the speed. All right, knowing that if the speed should be increased and if we want our vehicle to be at a higher speed, we would also like the torque to be at higher speed. Now what we not to know is that whenever a car uses a higher torque it would mean that the energy consumed will be much higher so what does that mean that means that whenever a vehicle uses high amount of energy the torque is going to be higher because we want to drive at the high speed and therefore the speed will be greater but what's really a main concern is that whenever energy is higher what's really happening is that your battery power is actually discharging it's going down so there is a few amount of range the range of your vehicle actually decreases so we can say that the energy over here is inversely proportional to the range all right so if energy is supposed to be going up the range is actually going down now we can see now if we look at the graph we can see that the higher torque which is around 8000 all right newton meter if we see that 8000 7000 these are the high end ranges this is the speed that we are getting which is about uh, you can say a 50 to 100 
miles per hour. So most of the graph are in this area, which is in red, and this is what's really happening. So even with having a 5,000, 4,000 torque, what's really happening is that we need to know that speed is something that needs to be taken into consideration whenever the manufacturers are making the car. All right. You might be wondering how the circuit design really works like within the battery system. So I have taken a battery system example with a circuit involved in it and I'll be going through how the circuit is actually functioning. All right. The first thing that I would like to do is talk about what's really happening in the battery. First, you have battery cells that are packed together. So normally you would have cells, okay? And these cells are packed together and these cells when they are packed they are made in into a battery this battery is then connected to an inverter and as you can see we have one two three so you have three parallel connections three parallel connections involved now why do we really have a three parallel connection rather than one? Well the main of the reasons is if one connection fails the other should not. One of your connection is con connected to your more battery operated driving connection. So your car should not be stopping even for example your music system stops. It's okay to have a non-functioning music system for some amount of time rather than having a unused and unoperational vehicle when you're driving on the road so this is the main reason why we use a parallel connection in our battery system now this inverter is making sure that every time a voltage is passing by in this case since this is positive the current is flowing in this direction whenever a current is flowing in this direction inversely this inverter is getting charged so protons are charging the inverter as soon as the charges are going passing by and as you can see when the circuit is completed the first operational is our electric machines which is perhaps the machine or the engine of EV alright first one is the main operational connector and that's what it really matters the second one however is this one which is connected to a speed gear so this engine is supposed to be factoring a speed gear. So if you want to speed up, speed down, or keep it constant. So this all movements are decided by your engine, which is connected to the speed gear over here. And it's also using one of the parallel connection. Third and foremost parallel connection is using for the differential. Say you want to drive wheel pair. So you want to turn right, turn left, this function is being operated using the differential activator over here so this also needs to be functioning when you have a circuit you run on a battery pack so these three things are needed to be considered and that's where the whole circuit is formed do keep in mind that we are using an inverter in our battery pack unnecessarily the reason is that if the battery pack fails we have inverter to generate the power that we would require in the case of failure of a battery. But in most of the times, we can see that battery does not fail and have a 10 year duty cycle. So it's really up to the manufacturers whether they want to in build a inverter into the circuit system or just keep it the battery as it is. And normally, if you see a hybrid car, you will not see an inverter placed in it. So the hybrid car does not have inverter on it. This is a battery electric vehicle circuit system, which is being explained. And I hope you understood this. If you have, please subscribe and like if you haven't already. Thanks for watching.